Uh, got a couple questions from uh, Josh, and he's got existing customers. You know, they're using his platform. Uh, they, they they seem to like it. He, he's thinking, how do I um, how do I figure out what they like, what they don't like, so that I can improve and iterate this this product? And his concerns, which he mentions, is he doesn't want to burn bridges with his customers by annoying them with too much outreach, and he wants to understand what's the right way to to kind of open and frame these conversations so that they're unbiased. So, in terms of burning bridges and outreach. Um, I see a lot of founders fall for the mistake where as soon as someone signs up for their service, they think they have the right to contact them and start asking for favors. So you sign up and then they send you a survey and they go, hey, thanks so much for signing up. Could you just fill out this survey to let us know what you need? We'd love to learn from you. But that's a huge mistake because the you haven't given value to the customer yet, so you can't ask for their time yet. Um, there's a certain reservoir uh, of goodwill that customers have when they sign up. And as you build value for them, that, that reservoir increases, it fills up. And then you can draw down on it by asking for favors. But if you ask for too much too soon, you basically empty the reservoir of goodwill and your customers abandon. You burn bridges, as, as Josh said. So what I like to do is I look for, I first make myself available. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But instead of sending a survey when they first sign up, I just say, hey, I'm Rob, I'm the founder. You know, I'm here if you have questions or problems or frustrations or whatever. Some people respond to that, it's fine, and there's no harm. People like it. You're not asking for anything, you're just offering. Uh, secondly, I wait for the moments where they want to talk to me. So common examples of this are a bug request, bug, uh, bug mention. So someone goes, hey, there's a bug on the website, or oh, there's a typo here, or oh, I, I was trying to do this and I ran into this problem. They've reached out to you, so it's much easier to take that moment and transition under the guise of going over the top on customer support and saying, "Hey, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Like, we fixed that, or we're fixing that this week." You know, and you can use that moment. They're already engaged. They're much more willing to talk then, so it's easier to switch into a learning conversation or a feedback conversation or get them on the phone or whatever. Um, other examples would be if they send in a huge complaint. And if you go over the top on solving it and then say, hey, you know, I'm so sorry you were frustrated. I, I, I'd love to learn more about your experience so we can try to do better. One For one, like that turns uh, detractors into evangelists, which is amazing if you go over the top and you engage someone when they're angry. But it's also a great moment uh, to talk or if someone's submitting tons of feature requests or blah, blah, blah. All of those are moments when they're really engaged. And it's basically just don't do these blasts to all of your customers. Those tend not to work. It, it needs to be a bit more sensitive than that to find the right moments. Then in terms of how to set up the conversations and what would you say first? So Josh's suggestion was, is there anything about the platform that frustrates you at the moment? And he kind of mentions, you know, at least this gets them talking about themselves and, and their usage, but it's maybe not ideal because it's a bit vulnerable, rigid, defensive, but it's the justification for the call. Um, so he's sort of saying like, hey, can we get on a call so you can tell me your frustrations about the platform? Um, I think that's fine, you know, whatever. Sometimes there's this idea of not every question needs to be perfect. Sometimes people read the mom test and they get a bit too uh, formulaic. They get a bit too self-censoring where they're trying to make every single question they ask absolutely perfect. And that doesn't always work. So there's this concept from Salim Varani, who was one of my previous co-founders, and he was, he helped me figure out the mom test before the book existed. We were, we were figuring it out together. He has the idea of a volleyball set. So some questions don't deliver value, but they set the ball into a position where you can spike it to receive value later. So sometimes you're just opening up a conversation topic, which even with a question, which you know will be biased or bias inducing, but you don't mind too much. You're not trying to, you're not taking the answer to that question as golden data, but it's putting you in a position and opening the topic so you can ask the question you want to ask next. So in volleyball, it's the set, and then the good question is the spike. Um, what you've written, like what are your frustrations about the platform, blah, blah, blah. Like it is bias inducing. It might not be perfect, but it might also give you, you know, the set to get the ball into position where you can ask what you really want. So that's totally fine. This is one of the reasons to take good notes because often you'll get big compliments off of these sorts of set questions. And then your brain will misremember that as positive validation. And so if you take good notes, you can remember, oh yeah, that answer, like I, I was fishing for compliments there. So it's not, it's not real data. Um, Another line of questioning that you, you might try adding in. Um, so like Josh, Josh sent uh, all of his his like little interview transcript and stuff. And it, honestly, Josh looks great. Really good questions. I love the way you've applied it. I think what you've done is going to be really good. It's better than 95% of, of what I've seen. It's great. So, you know, you're not going to go wrong. But a useful series of questions is around use cases. So like, hey, when you signed up for this, what were you trying to accomplish? Like what was going on in your head? Like what was the decision that made you decide to sign up or to try this? Or what are the things that like you wanted to do on the platform and you tried, but you couldn't. 
you know, like what were the uh, failed user journeys or use cases that weren't achieved? Or, you know, typically when you when, when you log on for the day and start doing stuff, like what's in your head that you're trying to achieve? Like what's happening? Is it are you putting it on for, you know, and maybe they say, oh, I put it on when I'm cooking dinner. So, you know, I get some uh, some video knowledge. They do interviews and stuff. I get some knowledge while I'm cooking or like, oh, I, you know, it's during my commute or, oh, it's when I need a break for lunch or oh, actually this is like a core part of my work day and I give it a dedicated hour each day to study and I take notes and pay attention. That sort of stuff around the user journeys and the triggers for why they got started in the first place and why they sign up each day uh, could be could be really relevant. And because it's about the journeys and their decision making and, and, and why they did it last time, don't ask like, why do you usually do it? They're like, hey, you know, last time. You're going to get a lot of useful ideas and, and those sorts of things, even if they don't directly change your product, they can often feed back into your marketing, your sales material. Uh, they give you new ideas for value propositions and taglines. So often the customer's own words, you can just kind of rattle those words back to them later in your marketing message. And what I try to do when you combine these concepts, like you're not going to be able to learn from everyone all at once, but you can try to learn from a few people each week at the time when it's right for them in a way which is high value for them. So hopefully that helps. Uh, great question. And again, you're, do you're doing great work. The, the the stuff you sent over is so good. And um, thank you for the little article you, you shared as well about uh, applying the process. All super valuable. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link it in the video description. So if other people want to learn from your very good approach, they can uh, check out your article. So thanks, everyone. Uh, send me questions if you got them. And uh, yeah, 